just want to welcome you to the Methodist Church and to this occasion this morning. Sad occasion. We're happy to see you supporting the family and friends. Welcome to the Methodist Church. Our service will begin at 10 o'clock at the stadium. In the meantime, we'll continue to continue and to be in solemn mood with the family.
we are continuing to mourn the death of our dear friend Charmaine Rosamund Peters, Rosamund Peters. We welcome you to the Methodist Church. You just arrived.
I am the resurrection and the life, says the Lord. He who believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And whosoever lives and believes in me shall not die. The hour is coming, and now is when you can hear the voice of the Son of God, and those who hear will live. We brought nothing into this world, and it is certain that we shall carry nothing out. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. If we live in faith, love divine, or love's excellent.
please be seated. Let us all pray. O God of gods and King of kings, you the great I am, who is above all, surrounding all and in all. You the great creator, preserver and sustainer of all humanity and every single created order in this world and vast universe. You the one who spoke the word and things came into existence and you continue to speak the word from day to day. On this beautiful Monday morning, O oh God, with the sun blazing down in this part of your world, we get ourselves before the throne of grace here in this Kingstown Methodist Church. We praise you, O oh God. We acknowledge you and you alone to be the Lord. And we give you the highest note of praise for only you are worthy. And so, O oh most gracious God, we turn to you in the sorrow and grief of our bereavement, praying that we may find the strength we need in your sustaining grace, so that even as we mourn the death of Charmaine Bosman Peters, one whom we knew and loved, we may not be overcome by this trial but we may hold the fast, trusting in your goodness and mercy. Assure us, O Lord of God, that death is not the end of those who trust in you. And may our hearts be so composed in the Holy Spirit that our fear and bitterness may be swallowed up in the light and peace you give to your troubled children. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty and eternal God, who by the Holy Spirit minister to us in our weakness, and by the victory of your Son, Jesus Christ, have given us the pledge of eternal life. Lift us, we pray, above our present distress and sorrow, and shed the light of your grace and glory upon us, through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Just want to extend a word of welcome to all of you worshiping here in the chapel this morning, as well as a welcome to those who are joining online. I pray that despite the grief of the moment, that as we worship God, we will be spiritually blessed and drawn closer to Him. We are met in this solemn moment to commend Charmaine Rosman Peters into the hands of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who sent His Son, Jesus Christ, to be our Redeemer, by whose stripes we are healed and in whose name alone we have salvation. Through the items indicated on the tributes, first by a family member, then tributes by the children, then the class that Charmaine was a member of here at Kingston, class 21, as well as solo by the niece, Sonica Peters. We will call to mind the life of our departed loved one, and afterwards, I want to invite you to be ministered to from Holy Scripture. So we now ask that we have the tributes as indicated. Please come at this time.
Good morning, everyone. We just want to give you thank you. a few fun memories of our beloved cousin, Charmin. Charmin loved her boys and did all in her power to ensure that they had a good upbringing. I recall Charmin as a very vibrant, jovial, and friendly person who captivated the hearts of many with her jokes and her crazy antics. She had a smile that was unforgettable. She was one of intermediate high school long distance runners. She ran the 800, the 100 races. She attained several mem um, medals for her achievements. I recall a past student, a classmate telling me, don't forget that we would always, once you're a good runner, they would want you to run all the races. And every time they ask Shannon, she's like, I'm the only person here, y'all wanna kill me? But no matter what, she would go. And she would lean her head and she would start to run. And if you don't catch her when she has her hand on her waist like this, you're not going to catch her again. And that is also being done bare feet. She loved getting the glucose sugar in the true shaman style. So you would get the sugar, that, even though you run, but she pretended to pay so she would get additional sugar. And that's, that one then became into a walk, because after she hung the pad, that it's good. That walk, I swear, it's faster than Shelly and Fraser Price. I can assure you, many can attest to that. One of my most fondest memories of Shaman is at Christmas. You see, she had a tight tongue and pronouncing words were a little tricky for her. Plus, she walked fast. So the same speech she walked was the same speech she spoke. So if she say good morning before the ink could do, you can't find her, she's gone. So when Christmas, she, was, she loved one particular song and you'll hear it to the top of her voice. I'm not saying that she could sing it, but she just wanted to say, I want to wish you a Merry Christmas, obviously with her title. The word Christmas was hard for her. So one of her neighbors who's now deceased upon hearing her would ask, Shami, what are you singing? And she would reply, Feliz Navidad. And then she continued, I want to wish you a Merry Christmas from the bottom of my heart. That was the ever jovial Shami I knew. I can remember trying to walk my path. But that swing was too much for me. And that tiny waist, I could not get it. As she distinctly walked with, her, with moving her hips left to right, feet going ahead of her. So when you see her coming down Mancho's Hill or Tom Hill, please give her away. These are all fond memories of Sharon. But I must mention her mention, I must mention her love for church. When her son she was here. I think that is the greatest memory of all. Her love for God, her love for family. I know you're at peace and you're out of your pain and struggles. But as you always say, God knows best. Sleep on my cousin. Rest in peace. We love you. Good morning, church. I'm here to share some memories as well of my mom. September 12th was one of the most difficult days for me and my siblings. It is the day our beloved Mother Charmin said goodbye to this world. Today, I speak on behalf of my brothers and me. And in reflection, we wish we had the opportunity to say goodbye. Our mother was loving and kind and kind-hearted. She did not have much to give, but we were always assured of her loving kindness. She was very proud of all of her children's accomplishments and would often encourage us to hold our heads high. Some of my fond fondest memories of her are she knew everybody's birth date. I never met someone who could recite almost everybody's birth date in our family. Whether they resided here or abroad, she knew each person's name, date, and month. Mom was also very content. Oftentimes, she would say, take little and live long. The sacrifices that she made for us were tremendous and far beyond. Even though she had little and no job, she always placed God at the head of everything and trusted him to see us through. He was her guide that helped her to, to persevere and make it through the raging waves as a single parent, having to raise four boys. 
Our mom had her many challenges, like all of us do, but never complained. In spite of all her challenges, she never neglected to ensure that she attended church. Her favorite quotes are, God is my everything. I have him in my mind, heart, body, and soul. Mom possessed the heart of his servant when it came to assisting and caring for people. I, can, I consider that to be her passion, a true gift from the Almighty. She had genuine love and care. Mom cared for our grandmother and grandfather and others within our community and outside as well. My personal hero, my mentor, my teacher, and role model, who shaped me to be the man I am today. While we knew she is at peace and her struggles are at an end, the pain still lives. However, her perseverance and love for her children and family will remain with us forever. Mom, I would like to say thank you for trying. You are both mother and father to us. How you did it is still a mystery to me. You instill love and a high level of discipline and respect in us. We did not always appreciate it then, but now that we are adults, a lot of what you taught us is paying dividends today. Thank you. We love you. On behalf of my brothers, my aunt, and the rest of the family, we'd like to say heartfelt, heartfelt thanking you for sharing this moment with us. Thank you. Class, thank you very much. Good morning all. Isaiah 41 10 says, <clears throat> So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. I am the class leader of class 21, the class in the Methodist church that Shaman belong to. These are small groups within our church where we meet and discuss issues and continue the word of the Lord that would have been shared maybe on the Sunday, maybe at Bible study, and just to further develop our spiritual walk. Shaman was always at church, and of course her family members knew that and would never want to miss. She was always a happy person. She loved the Lord. We know she had her health challenges, but she was always very positive. Eventually, when she couldn't come to church anymore, I would ensure that I call her on her birthday and just check up on her sometimes on Sundays when I know it's church time. And what a happy person she always was. She would just thank the Lord for her life. Just thank the Lord for coming for us to come to visit her. The minister and a team also visited her once a month. And again, they would say how happy she was to always see them. She would have her hands outstretched before you even reached her because she was so happy to see persons and to be among others, particularly those at church. And we know she loved her family as they also indicated. So on behalf of class 21 of the Kingston Methodist Church, we just want to extend our condolences to her children, her sister, and all the family members at this time. May she continue to rest in eternal peace. Thank you. Can I also now render a song?
And now we invite Tanika. To end us all. Is day go on? 
see you And my faith would be my sign And my presence of will be gone And all left behind And I'm so grateful for the favor Your mercy and your grace Is taking Thank you, thank you. You know, a family relative, she requested two songs, and I like to believe that these were two of her favorite songs. So of course, one can't go without the other. You know, as a congregation, if you know the song, just sing with me. I can only imagine I can only imagine yeah, what my eyes would see where your face is before me. I can only imagine. And I can only imagine where they take us And I find myself standing in the sun And I can only imagine when all I can do is forever With a worship I can only imagine I can only imagine To be surrounded
I want everybody to sing with me, right? It's an easy song. You know the voice, you know the chorus. Just sing this song with me. Let's go, let's try it together. To be surrounded by your glory. One with Beautiful singing. I thank God for such a powerful ministering to us in song. We want to thank the relatives and those who would have shielded the class leader, Sister Ruth Short, for the tributes paid to Charmaine. And now we sing the hymn. It is well with my soul, and after this we go into the ministry of the Word of God. to you the reason for the stop. Just sit, please. The two songs that were rendered just before I came back to you were the tributes to the children specially requested. Now we're going to have Sister Tom Tonika Peters singing It Is Well With My Soul. I know this hymn is well known to everybody here, but I want to ask you, allow her to render the item in a very special way so she will minister to us with this song, It Is Well With My Soul. Tomika, please come. When peace like a river attended my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll. Thou hast taught me to say 
sister and that was a wonderful cooperation on your part marvelous I didn't hear even hear someone sing the chorus that was really beautiful thank you sister Tonika Tonika and I'm sure the family members are very pleased that you were able to render that item and now we turn our attention to the scripture readings Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verses 1 to 8, read by Ashin Peters, the son of the deceased. And then Marcia Edwards will read 1 Corinthians 15, 50 to 58. Could the readers please come at this time? And after the second reading, our church choir will sing No More Nights. Good morning. Um, for everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to throw away stones and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. A time to seek and a time to lose. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear and a time to sow. A time to keep silent and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate. A time for war and a time for peace. This is the word of the Lord. Good morning, brothers and sisters. 1 Corinthians 15, reading from verse 50 to 58. What I am saying, brothers and sisters, is this. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit imperishable. Look, I tell you a mystery. We will not all die, but we will all change in a moment in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised imperishable. And we will be changed, for this perishable body must put on imperability, and this mortal body must put on imperability, imperishability, and this mortal put on immortality. Then the saying that is written, will be fulfilled. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brothers and sisters, 
be steadfast, immovable, always excel, excelling sorry, in the work of God, because we know that in the Lord, your labor is not in vain. The word of the Lord. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. The gospel reading comes from the familiar John chapter 14, reading verses 1 to 6 and 27. Glory to you, O God. Jesus speaking to his disciples said, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you're going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled. And do not let them be afraid. The Gospel of Christ. Praise be to Christ our Lord. The beautiful hymn, because he lives, I can face tomorrow.
to you, beloved, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Over the past two years, I've had the wonderful honor and privilege of visiting Charmaine Peters as one of the persons on the second shocking visitation list. I remember vividly the first time I was taken by our sister Daisy Williams to visit her and having to climb the steps and walk the long trail to her house. And I always remember that and even though we changed the route somewhat, for me whenever Deirdre and myself and the Gloria King on one or two occasions went to visit Charmin, I always regard it as a special honor and privilege. Why? I'm not quite sure. Because all the short things I say are important and I treat them that way. But there was something unique about Charmaine, there was something special about the surroundings that she was in. I can never recall seeing anybody else at the house, even though her relatives lived right next door. And while we were seeing them, there was nobody actually at the house. So most times when we went, she was there alone. And she never appeared to be someone who was angry or lying or irritated about her circumstances. She always welcomed us gladly. And the last occasion was perhaps one of the happiest for me. And I remember asking her, about coming out to church. And God has a real sense of humor, we often say. And we have to be careful what we pray for. Because then pray that God will find a way for us to bring Charmaine out to church. But I didn't tell God to keep her coming every time from weeks and months. But she's here today in body. And I do thank God, though, for the ministry, the sharing with her, and the whole experience of visiting her. I believe that she knew the Lord. I believe that she was serious about life. And despite her health challenges, I believe that she was a happy and contented person and that would have come out in the tribute mentioned earlier. She was a member of this Kingstown Methodist Church and I want on behalf of the officers and members of the congregation, her class leader and the membership as a whole and particularly to the ministers and myself, I want to express deeply sympathy to the sovereign relatives. I pray that God will strengthen you, the sons, the children, and all the good you, the other family members, that God will really help you to come through this period of mourning. Thank you for your care of Charmaine because I know that her family right next door would have been caring for her. And I want to pray that God will bless you, that as you go through the spirit of mourning, that you will be drawn closer to Him as well. I want to ask at this time that the relatives will stand and I will offer a prayer for them. Let's stand where you are. Father, we give you thanks and praise for life and relationships. You have put us on this earth just for time. So God, even as you have called Charmaine home, we recognize the void and we recognize that we have been plunged into a state of grief and mourning. I pray particularly today, O oh God, for the relatives of our departed loved one. I pray that you will so strengthen and undergird them that they will go through this 
Holy Spirit, Lord, experiencing you, experiencing your grace towards them. I should provide for them, protect them, enable them, and speak into their lives words of love and encouragement through the Holy Spirit. But I pray to all God that that for our relatives standing in your presence and this time, that you will so draw them close to you that the spirit of grief and mourning will be one of introspection and one of them committing themselves to your will and to your will. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray with thanksgiving. Amen. Please be seated. The passage of scripture from Ecclesiastes chapter 3 has a verse that I will want to join on to the eight that we read. The eight that we read speaks of time and the opportunities that time provides and the things that occur in our lives the different seasons, the different times that we experience. But verse 9 says, as, as it asks the question, what gain have the workers from their toil? What gain have the workers from their toil? In other words, the verse is pointedly asking, what's the use? The truth is, in the world in which we live in, the community and the time in which we are living, we can live a very busy, a very active life from birth all the way through to when the Lord calls us home and we transition to eternity. You see from very early ages now that children are going all over the place, sometimes even on overseas trips. And there's nothing wrong with that, it's just pointing out what happens. And then we go to preschool and go on to the different stages of education. That is a life in itself as we are going and going and going and studying and studying and studying and we are also active. And we become adults, we acquire things, we have a, a spouse, we have children, we raise them, and we take on more responsibility and we are going, 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 going. And we come to know the Lord and we come to serve the Lord and we draw closer to Him and whether we are attending by the study for meetings or doing work in the church, we can be active, active, active. And then our time of tragedy will come and we leave this earth we see. And you and I must answer the question for ourselves. We cannot answer the question for Charmaine or anyone else. You have to, in a sense, stand in the mirror of God and answer the question, what's the use of life for you? Is it just a basic occasion of doing one thing after another after another? Is it simply a case of time taking away and taking away and then getting older and older and going through the seasons even of illness? Is that all the case to life? It is not for you and I to hear say, say yes, that is all it is to life, or no, that is not all it is to life. We need to analyze the situation here. Because there are some persons who will say to us that no, that is not all it is to life. But on the other hand, they don't do anything else but that in life. Just activity after activity after activity. And I want to say three things to us coming out of the readings that we have this morning. 
for someday and we will never, never know the day. And many people have told us that and I can visit John in the last time and that would be the last few days that she would have been on earth. We would have said no because she had looked the greatest on that day. She would even get ready to get her glasses having gone so you and I don't know when our last days are going to be when we will bring our last and transition from this earth. But one thing we know that we have to know, and for God's sake, don't just seek to destroy other people, even by the slight way that we may operate. Don't just seek to drive down others. Let us seek to build up. Let us seek to encourage. Let us seek to compliment. For there is nobody that will be exactly like the other person. You will never be like me and I will never be like you. But at least let us appreciate that as we walk together, I must touch your life for good and you must touch mine for good. And that very important quotation that I love so much says, there is a destiny that makes us brothers and sisters. None goes this way alone. What you put into the lives of others comes back into your own. If you put good, good will come back. If you put poison, poison will come back and will even kill you. Two. The reading from John chapter 14 is a very familiar one. We read it so often. I can stand up and read that now without even looking at the Bible. We all know it. But what is it saying? It is not simply about Jesus going away and coming back to receive us. It really speaks about relationship with God through Jesus Christ. And therefore, And we are transformed, our bodies 
will also be saved and transformed. And we become different persons. We become the person that God wants us to be. And the whole conversation with Jesus is one that echoed what Paul wrote in Romans chapter 8, verses 31 to 39. Yes, I'm leaving you in the flesh. Yes, I will suffer and be put to death. But don't fail. For that's not the end. For nothing, absolutely nothing, will separate us from the love of God through Jesus Christ. And he was pointing them to the fact that even in leaving them, he will still be with them. And furthermore, when this earthly scene is no more, we who have lived in the Lord and died in the Lord will live on with him eternally. And let me make a point. No minister can get up here or anywhere else and usher anyone into heaven or hell. The person decides that themselves before they die. And so the option is for us, while we are still alive, to give our lives for Jesus Christ. And to know for sure that we are saved. To be able, like Fanny Cross did to say, blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. For we cannot wait. And then the time has gone, even unexpectedly. Somebody else is going to pray for our salvation. We do not believe that as Methodists. And scripture does not support that either. So young people, and all the ones as well, now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. And God does not want us to be the most brilliant Christian. God just wants us to be faithful to him every day of our lives. Faithfulness. And certainly, Charmaine, for modification was not the most brilliant. But thank God for her faithfulness. And that is what you and I have to do. Thirdly and lastly, love in all of the circuits that I have worked in, this circuit, people use this scripture more than any other scripture. You know why? Because it speaks of the resurrection. But let me put the thing in perspective for us. The resurrection is a base every just the resurrection. Because the Bible says that on the last day of judgment, those who are in the Lord and those who are not in the Lord will rise. In other words, the resurrection is for all of us. But what happens after? There will be a great separation with those who will be called to be with the Lord forever and those who will be damned in hell. And I am sure that none of us in this room want to be damned to hell. I am sure that none of us want to experience the resurrection just to hear away from me, I do not know you. And the important thing about the resurrection for you and for me, as Paul says, that it helps us to accept and receive the crown of righteousness. When we live our lives as God wants us to live, we await the crown of righteousness. The prize is there waiting for us. It's like someone coming home and knowing that the prize is still waiting for them. We don't just go home. We go home to the Lord. And the day as we read that past the scripture, it is not simply telling us about another life. In fact, none of us will come back after the resurrection and live the same kind of life that we are living now in this flesh and blood with all the issues of earthly life. We will not. And so even the verse that talks about the fact that we will not all die, we need to recognize 
Johnny and Daddy in the 50th year. There's some of us who would die much younger. I buried a 14 year old a couple of months ago. And yes, we rejoice that some will reach 100 years and plus. It doesn't matter. What matters? Am I ready? Are you ready? And it's important. For when we put the three things together and we seek to live a good life, we seek to have a relationship with God, and we know that we are ready, waiting for the prize, you and I can be joyful every day. And you and I can sing and say and do everything else about the joy unspeakable and full of glory in our hearts. I pray that for you and for me, that Charmaine's transition will be one when we thank God for her life. We thank God for the difference that she made in the life of every person she touched, including her children. But that you and I will be challenged. Is it worth it? What's the use? And that we can say with both assurance, yes, life is useful, for we can do good. Yes, life is useful, for we can have a relationship with God to Jesus Christ. Yes, life is useful, for we have a home and a prize awaiting us in heaven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We sing the hymn 344 with your anchor hold in the storms of life.
image for a third fellowship with you. Praise and thanksgiving to you, O Christ, our Lord and our God, who have overcome the sharpness of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers, and are now seated at the right hand of God in the glory of the Father. Praise and blessing be to you, O Holy Spirit, God our Comforter, who bear witness within us of our acceptance with the Father, and have become the pledge of our eternal inheritance. All praise and glory, blessing and honor, thanksgiving and worship be to you, O Blessed Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. We bless your name, O Lord God, for the life of charming Rosman Peters, who will be the day day to rest. We give you thanks for the joy and the blessing of life and brought to others, for our service to her generation according to your will, and for every happy remembrance of her life. We bless you, Lord God, for your mercy and goodness. We follow charming all the days of her life that now the trials of this world are over and death itself is past. We see Jeremiah, Rosamund, Peters into your perfect kingdom, O God, and bring us with all who have lived and served you faithfully to the fullness of your eternal joy, to Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand for the Continuing prayer. Eternal God, you have made us all and yet nothing that you have made, and have given your Son for our redemption. We commend our sister, Charmaine Rosman, to your perfect mercy and wisdom. Eternal rest grant unto her, and let perpetual light shine upon her. The Lord's prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For that is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. The glorious name of the Methodist Church and the Christian faith and can it be the Dijon name.
Lord of our peace. Who part of the death of the dead of our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep by the blood of the eternal covenant, make you perfect in every good thing to do his will, working in you that we should be pleasing in his sight. To Jesus Christ, to whom we do glory forever and ever. Amen. Please you may stand here in your places where the body is removed from the chapel followed by the close friend. Okay, good afternoon. Um, it's a bit rainy on its way to the, this site, um, but um, stay online and we'll keep you posted with what is happening. So please stay on link.
Ja ne ima na eksploitu tu kniku kuli pakete. Mi so snadalni se bojvati za mandi. Da mandi je eksploitu tu kuli iz pakete. Ja. 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 Because why? When he is forced and he has to do the other hours day. For 6 to 12 tonight, he has to force and all things. My friend, Thank you. 
backwards and then you We know that neither death, nor life, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature can separate us from the love of God, which is in Jesus Christ our Lord. We know that if this earthly house of our tabernacle be dissolved, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. Since our sister Charmaine Rosman has departed out of this life, and Almighty God in His mercy has taken her to Himself, we therefore commit her body to the ground, dust to dust, ashes to ashes, earth to earth, in sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ. I heard a voice from heaven said unto me, from henceforth, Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. Even so says the Spirit, for they rest from their labors. Let us pray. O merciful God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, Father of mercies and God of our comfort, raise us up, we pray, from death of sin to the new life of righteousness, that when we shall depart this life, we shall be found acceptable in your sight. This we pray to this Christ our Lord. Amen. Grant to the bereaved consolation and faith in this time of distress and trial. The blessed hope in the coming of your kingdom, the sustaining grace and the fellowship of your people, and steadfastness in the service of your name and the doing of your way. To this Christ our Lord. Amen. I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me from henceforth, Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. Support us, O Lord, all the day long of this troublous life, until the shadows lengthen, the evening comes, the busy world is hushed, the fever of life is over and our work is done. Then, Lord, in your mercy, grant unto us safe lodging, holy rest, and peace at the last. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Go ahead, brother. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Great things He has done so Thank you. 
blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. One God. Be with you, your loved ones, and all those from whom One God. you are right okay, now and forevermore. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah.